how's it going? I'm Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. So I've been sent another 3D printer to play with. So let's get to it. <laughs> I don't know, anyway. So hi, yeah, as I said, I'm Rory from Rate My Funeral. That was Rate, by the way. And welcome along to another tech review video. So Geekbind have sent me this, the Artillery Sidewinder X2. And uh, this is a, a 3D printer. It's badged as being quick assembly, so it means that it should in theory be super quick to put together and get working. It's supposed to be pretty quick at printing. It's got a fairly decent sized bed of 300 by 300 by 400. It's also supposed to be quiet and has a glass heated bed, as well as a color touchscreen to control it. It's around about 330 pounds to buy. Have a look in my description, I've got a discount code. So you'll find all the information about the printer as well as the code that will allow you to get it for a little bit cheaper. Now I'll just note, my voice might be a little bit off. I've been seriously unwell this week and I've finally recovered. I'm back into things again, but just got the voices up. Hopefully I'll be all right and I'll power through this. Now, anyway, whatever, let's get this thing open and find out what it's like. <sighs> it's not gonna work, is it? But this might. Ooh. So, okay, let me show you the inside packaging. For the claim size of print bed, that's actually not a bad size box. And it looks pretty neat. So let's have a look and see what's in here. We have a little pencil case. There's some useful tools and stuff in there. Cool. We've got a piece of metal. A physical manual. Ah. Cattle lead. And now the jigsaw of foam. Hmm, okay, I don't know what to do now. It says do not remove. So how do I take it out of the box? Seriously, how do I take it out of the box? <laughs> I'm such a silly. <laughs> I need to put it down. Right, I've been gentle. So this is what it means by 95% assembly, in that it is basically done. Now, the only bit that worries me was the last printer I had, that the assembly was like this, was a nightmare. And at this point I have now discovered that I have put this on upside down, so now <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is so hard. Yeah, I'm hoping this might be a little bit easier. I mean there really isn't a lot here to assemble, so how hard can it really be? I reckon it's time for an assembly montage. <laughs> So the screws are already in place. They're already pre-inserted. All you have to do is get your Allen key and tighten it up. That's actually much easier. Oh, I like it. And there we go. Okay, so in all fairness, that was actually really very easy to put together. It was essentially four screws to hold this in place and it kind of goes into its position and stays there while you do it. So there's no kind of juggling. Cable ties were holding all of this together. This 
fairly straightforward. You just put the, the two sides together and screw a little screw in the back here. And there's a connector for this, which I'm guessing is the filament sensor. A few little connectors to plug in down here. Now this is one point, is that I've got this kind of seemingly spare connector that looks like it needs to have something plugged into it but I cannot find any other end or any reference to it in the manual so I'm not sure what that one's for yet <laughs> no doubt it will become apparent if it is required at the point where we start trying to use it so there we go so yeah so overall first run over the printer it's it's quite beasty you know I mean it sits very tall the plastic trim it's a little bit kind of Halfords <laughs> but technically you could redesign and print these and sort of customize it a little bit. I, I like that idea. Also, I quite like the way this reel holder works. So you, you basically just pop your filament on there and, and that's how it's, it's going to work. So it's quite easy to put on uh, and take off. But again, quite nice design. This is all pretty bulky. It's not particularly attractive at the bottom here, but I, I imagine it's going to do the job, you know? And as I said before, this is a really decent sized build plate. So I'm going to actually be able to print some pretty large stuff on this thing. Filament looks like it's just going to literally go straight into there, push it through. Very, very simple. So yeah, so I can't see any problems at the moment anyway. Yeah, nice assembly. So this says do not remove on it, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So just having a quick look around, you know, it, it's a decent looking printer. It's fairly robust. You've got a LCD screen on the front here. There's a USB socket. There's an SD card socket. We've got a USB socket for connecting to a PC on the other side here. So you've got your kettle lead connection and your on off switch here. And on the top here, you've got your filament holder. It's decent. Right, so next, let's power it on. Hang on, first. Peely. Okay, so let's now power it on, level the bed, put some filament in, and then we can do a test print. Right, she's powered on. We've got our little touch screen, which is pretty responsive. So the first thing I want to do is level. So level the bed. So, so it's giving me the option for the five positions on the print bed. So I'm going to choose the first one, let it go there. No doubt I'm going to need a piece of paper for this. So the kind of typical way to do this would be you get your piece of paper, you put it underneath. If it's digital, you can control it using the screen. However, this has little turning knobs. So I can't fit that under, so I'm going to release from underneath. So the bed has come pretty high, so I'm having to turn the little dial counterclockwise, counter which is giving me enough room to get the paper underneath. And now I'll tighten it back the other way. And then the idea is you just simply, you, you tighten it, whilst just moving the paper backwards and forwards. And as soon as you feel just a little bit of uh, resistance, that's where it is. If, you, if it's scraping the paper, then you're too close. But a little bit of resistance, and that should be fine. So now we hit the next one. Do the same. And so on until you've done all five. So if you've done it all correctly, by the time you get to the last one, the fifth one, the paper should just be slightly resisting and you're good to go. So next we're gonna figure out how you load the filament in. Now I've got this beautiful pink PLA, which I'm going to use. And the tip I always say about is cut your end at a slight angle. And that way it should be a bit easier to get into the nozzle. Just the tip. So there is a filament runout sensor, which has a piece of filament in it by default. And you may or may not be able to see it on the video, but this light's just turned red because I've removed this. So if I poke the filament through, the light then turns green. So that's how it knows that there's definitely still filament in there. Now I need to get this heated up. I'm just going to hit home first so that it goes back to wherever it's supposed to be. Which apparently is there. Or there. So I just found an option in the menu here that says auto level. So I'm just going to press it. Let's find out what it does.
now gone round and it's basically measured each point and it's now leveling itself so it does actually have a kind of mesh auto leveling it's pretty cool actually and that's now done okay so where were we we were putting the filament in right so i'm just going to raise this back just so it's not so far down we can see what we're doing a little bit right i now need to preheat the extruder so i'm going to choose the option heat and then choose the temperature so i don't know 210 so that's now heating up so that just needs a second i imagine So it's heated up pretty quickly. Uh, we're, it's only like 20 seconds or something and we're pretty much up to the 200 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this filament, push it into the hole, I'm gonna pull that lever and push that through until I feel some resistance. And then I'm gonna press extrude. I mean, I imagine, yeah, you can just push there. Oh, we've got some coming out there. So I'm gonna press change and I'm gonna put in and press confirm. There we go, it's pulling the filament through now. So this was the filament that was already in there, obviously from testing. And here's my pink, which is now there. The bar's going across, and it's all done and happy. And we can just remove that. And our filament's all loaded. That was actually very easy. That's the bed leveled, that's the filament in. We are ready. So I'm just gonna slice a benchy so we can put it through here. Now in terms of the slicer, you can use whatever one you want. There isn't sort of a dedicated one for this. Let's run it off and see what it's like. Okay, you join me over here on the PC. Now, basically you can set up pretty much any slicer to use with this uh, printer. However, it mentions in the manual about using Cura, but let's uh, let's have a little play with this and see if we can figure this out. Now, I understand uh, I had a non-networked printer, and in theory, if I come down here, I should be able to find artillery, and then should be able to find somewhere in this. Come on, there we go. Oh, right. Artillery and then artillery sidewinder X1. Now that's the X1, however, apparently it doesn't matter. So we can just change that name to X2 and press next. We wanna make sure that that is 300, 300 and 400. So we're gonna go ahead and press next. And skip this and finish that. Right, so that is our printer, sure enough, yep. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna drag and drop my Benchy model in. And there she blows. Uh, so standard quality, I am literally just gonna leave this exactly as default, because that's what I wanna know. Will this print as default if I just hit slice? One hour, 39 minutes, and I'm gonna save that to my USB drive. And now let's go get it into the printer. So it's finished. It took one hour and 20 minutes. Pretty quick. The, the slicer said it would be an hour and 40. So it's actually done it 20 minutes quicker than the slicer said. And to be fair, one minute 20 is really good. Normally it comes in at about an hour and a half. The last printer I did was about two hours. That's pretty good. Let's see, does it come off the bed easily? Just clicks off. And what's it like? You know, I'm gonna be honest. I'm actually super impressed. That has come out, I, I think that has come out really well. There's a little seam on the side. There's a little bit of banding. The archers are mostly good. The, uh, you know, I could be really picky and say there's just like a little bit of an edge on there. But yeah, that, that's come out really, really well. Check out the bottom side of that, it's, it's really good. There's a little bit of black filament, which I think was just left in from you know, that, that original filament that came out. Okay, so. Really impressive first print. Default settings, I didn't change anything. I just literally set the printer up, sliced the benchy, 
said do it, and that's what it's come out with. So now let's just do something else that'll take a little bit longer and see how that comes out. So another one done. I left this, this has been sat here overnight and it's no longer attached to the bed. I didn't actually remove it, it's just removed itself. And I tell you what, the print quality of this, I think is really impressive. There's a few little lines, there's a little bit of banding, there's a there's a very clear seam. I'm wondering if that's possible to resolve with uh, software tweaks. But overall, this has come out really well. It's, it's really nice. I've used this kind of, this skin color PLA because I thought that would be interesting. And yeah, it's come out really nicely. Um, on the bottom, I'll just show you the bottom here, look. It's mostly pretty clean. There's a little bit of the, the black filament. Now I'm wondering if what this actually is, is that my nozzle is a little bit close to the bed and it's causing it to heat a bit too much, maybe. Could be something like that. I've not messed with it, I've not tested or anything like that. I literally just plugged, played, printed, <laughs> you know. That's how I like to do these. I, I don't want to spend lots of time trying to tweak it and dial it in. I want to know how it works for someone that's just got it and doesn't really know what to do with it. So that's kind of how my approach is. Well, that now brings me on to five things that I don't particularly like about this printer. So here on the base, we have a USB port and a micro SD card. I hate micro SDs. They're too fiddly, and I think that these are too easy to lose. They're too easy to drop and even lose inside the printer. I would prefer a full-size SD card to this micro SD card nonsense any day of the week. The bed is made of glass, it's pretty good, but it's fixed, so you can't take the bed off and give it a flex to pop the print off. I've got so used to this with other printers now, I always feel like it's a bit of a step back to have a fixed bed. For doing the bed levelling, you have these little wheels under here that you have to turn to get the bed level. I just don't like that. I'd much prefer it if it was all manual, all digital, and you do it on the LCD screen. I don't like messing with knobs on the bed. The height of the printer is very tall, so obviously it gives that ability to do the 400 high. The problem that you've got with this is that this is quite wobbly. Now while I haven't tested it explicitly, I have a feeling that when you get prints that are right up this high, you're going to get quite a lot of shake up here, which could possibly ruin the print higher up. Now I'm not saying this for certain, but just based on that movement, it's a feeling I've got. While it is nice and responsive, the icons on the touchscreen don't actually make a lot of sense. There's some icons that are just simply wrong with what they do, and there's some icons that kind of say something like, it says preheat, when what that means is change the temperature. And it ends up confusing, exactly as I am being right now. It's an easy fix, but it needs to be done. But don't let this put you off. Here are five things I actually really love about this printer. The print bed is AC powered, which means it heats up extremely quickly. You do not have to wait very long for your print to actually start from the point when you hit print. It's really good, and I imagine that's part of the reason why the bed is fixed. I really liked how easy this was to put together out of the box. There was very little faffing. The fact that the screws were already in position was brilliant. All the connectors were really easy to connect, and it just worked. So in terms of assembly for an unenclosed printer, it's really good. Do you say unenclosed, or do you say non-enclosed, or printer that is not enclosed? I don't know what you say there, but for a printer that's not a, a box, it's good. It's very robust. The way everything's kind of held together is really nice. And I like this use of like decent ribbon cables rather than just thin ones. And at the front here, you've got this ribbon cable as well, so nothing goes droopy. It's a good design. And overall, the cable management on this printer is fantastic. It's really nice how everything is kind of integrated, part of that assembly. The connector is on this side, as you click it together it plugs itself in, as long as you've got it lined up alright, you're good to go. It's brilliant. And if you do manage to destroy or break this, it comes with a spare, so you're covered. 
So I didn't think that I'd actually like this, but this filament reel holder is actually better than I thought. The fact that it kind of glides super, super easily is really nice, and I think that it really helps with the printing, and it makes swapping it super, super easy, especially with the direct drive filament changes. Plus, you've got this little filament runoff sensor, so it means that if you run out of filament, it will know and it will pause the print for you. For what you get, for the size of the print bed, the amount of stuff you've got, this is an extremely cost-effective printer, so a really good one if you don't want to spend too much money, but you want decent quality prints. In terms of noise levels, it's really good. So right now, in this room, I've got an ambient decibel reading of about 30. I'm going to turn it on. No noise. There's no fans, there's nothing happening when you're not actually printing. Now while that might sound like an odd thing to say, some printers they just have a, an ambient hum from fans, even if you're not printing or heating or anything. This one doesn't do it, so I like that fact a lot. I'll go ahead and set a print going. So whilst it's warming up, we just got an 8 dB rise. Absolutely nothing. If you listen, it's a very, very minor hum. So we're now starting to print. A second fan has kicked in. And it's now sitting at the idle of about 42. And as you can hear, there's so little noise. So there's a demonstration of exactly how quiet that is. When I talk, I'm so much louder than it. So in terms of quietness, really good. So there we go, that's the Artillery Sidewinder X2. If I'm being brutally honest, I didn't have extremely high hopes for this printer, but it has thoroughly proved me wrong. In terms of print quality, I think that's really good. Bearing in mind I didn't change anything from the default, I just pressed next a bunch of times, and it gave me those kinds of prints. In terms of noise, as you can hear, it's printing right now. It is super quiet. So this can be sitting running and I can be in conferences. No problem at all. Got the big bed. So if you want to do a workhorse and print lots of small parts, you can do that. Or you want to print something massive, you've got that ability. I'd only say just watch out for maybe the wobble on the top here. Assembly, as I mentioned, super, super easy. Really nice to put together. And overall, I would say a really good little printer. And I would absolutely recommend this to someone that wanted to get a machine but didn't want to spend a huge amount of money. And with that in mind, do remember, check the description, there's a voucher code in there to get a bit of money off one of these. So go ahead, click that link, follow that through, and uh, you can save a bit of cash and pick one of these up. And of course, I do hope you enjoyed the video, so thank you very much for joining and getting all the way to the end here. If you did enjoy it, please do me a massive favour, hit that like button. Also, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, and remember, hitting the little bell will notify you of any future videos I put up. And that's basically it from me, so until the next video, I just say, bye for now.